Hello, welcome to part three of my uh, video postmortem for Treasure Adventure Game. Um, my name is uh, Stephen Orlando. I am the creator of Treasure Adventure Game, and what I'm doing is just uh, playing through my game, um, giving a little background on on how um, you know how I created it, some of the trials and tribulations I may have had. Um, Today I am basically going to be answering questions that were posted off the comments of the last video because I got so many good questions I'm sure it'll probably take up the whole time, but if, uh, if not I got a few other things I could talk about too. So before we do that, let me just figure out what I gotta do here. So let's see, I got, uh, let's see, I got the sale, so now we have to go back to the museum. So, alright, so let me just start with um, some of the questions that you guys sent me. So, someone asked me, um, what my work schedule is like for this game. So uh, I'm not sure I mentioned this before, but I, I did work on this game um, in my spare time. It, I am not a professional game designer, as you probably could tell. But um, so yeah, I, I worked full time. Actually, I, when I first started, I was going to school and working, and actually trying to run a small company doing T-shirts. So at first, I really didn't have much time at all. But the uh, the T-shirt company went under, and I got graduated through you know from school, so that gave me a lot more time. So I would say that I tried to work on it just about every day. Um, on the weekends, obviously, I had more time, and during the week, uh, I would try to spend at least an hour or two um, every day. Um, that um, didn't always happen, obviously, um, but it was pretty consistent, and I do feel that you know probably affected my social life quite a bit actually <laughs> so but um but yeah it was, it was pretty consistent and um and I really enjoyed it so it wasn't it, that really wasn't a problem for me I, I was glad to be able to work on it every day and it did really become a habit after a while and it's kind of continued I feel like I do have a habit now that, well, you know every day I want to work on um something whether it's um you know a game or some other project but I just feel like I want to take the time to, to produce something, create something. So it's kind of continued, which is which is really great to be able to um, to have that sort of. Um, yes. It's like one of those types of yes. habits that you know you feel good about. So so yeah, I definitely like that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked me how uh, I did the sound effects and the music. So uh, I didn't do the music at all. That was all. Uh, that's actually a whole other story. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. So I had a, a friend of mine did the music for the game, Robbie Ellis, and. Um, and I definitely will talk, go into more depth about some of that. Uh, as far as the sound effects go, um, I really, well, it's basically as simple as this. I, I found um, a website, um, SoundSnap, which is just a library of, uh, of sound effects, and you can search them. And I actually, I, got, I guess I got in on it early when they were sort of in beta, and so I kind of got this deal where I could get f five free sound effects a month. Uh, without having to pay for them. And so since, uh, you know, this game took me almost three years, that, you know, I don't know exactly what that adds up to, but it's, you know, it a lot of free sound effects I was able to download from that. And um, obviously, you know, they weren't always um, edited just the way I wanted them to be. So I, uh, I found a program, actually it's a program I've been using for like a, for a long time, like a decade. It's called Sound, uh, Sound, Gold Wave. Yeah, so it's called Gold Wave. It's a really simple, sound editor. Uh, it's not fancy and that's fine with me because I don't need to get too deep into it. You know, it lets me trim things, it lets me change volumes, fade tracks in and out, it lets me blend the two, two sound effects together or, you know, just or do some basic filters. Uh, so yeah, so if, you, if you're new to sound effects and I would recommend it's called Gold Wave and I think, it's, I believe it's free. If not, it's shareware and it's real cheap. Um, uh, to purchase like $20 or less and um, yeah and, and check out soundsnap.com uh, like I said you probably can't get it, them free now but I believe it's like a subscription based thing so you pay I don't know 20 bucks a month and you can download unlimited samples and I think you can preview them for free so um, yeah so that's basically how most of the sound effects uh, came into the game I would say like 90% of them or more let's see so what else do we got here? Oh, oh crap. I'm trying to read questions while I'm playing. Okay, so um, someone asked me, how, uh, why did I decide on two moons? Uh, it's daytime right now, but in the, nighttime is two moons. That's a really simple uh, answer. That's just basically as simple as I wanted to distinguish the world that this took place in from Earth. Um, oh, good timing. 
I um, I just wanted you know people to to think like to realize that this wasn't just like you know this was a different world. This was a fantasy world. Um, that was basically. I just thought you know that would be an easy way to to differentiate you know this world from Earth. So. And, you know, I don't think having two planets isn't exactly an original idea. I think that's a Star Wars ripoff, actually. But, you know, it works. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, he, uh, they, that person also asked, why did I decide on eight days? And um, I think that was just... It was just the math was easier to do for eight days and seven days. It was even number. I thought um, I wanted to have... The only time... Really, there's only one place where the which day it comes is which day it is matters and that's at the club in the city and I figure just easier there's in the club there's four different acts that can be playing um, at any time and, um, and I just figured you know four that just times that by two you got eight so I just did eight days and I don't know it just sort of worked out I mean like I said I wanted to do maybe more things where you know the day would matter but it just that didn't end up happening so um, so yeah, really just, just math purposes. Seven days just, you know, I mean, we, we think of it as normal that we had a seven day week, but it's not, it's a weird number, you know? So I think eight, I think eight days would make more sense. And then we, maybe we could make that an extra day a weekend, you know, like Sunday too. That'd be good. Um, and kind of related to that, someone asked how, um, to explain a little bit of how I uh, implemented the day and night system. Um, that was, I mean, it was, it's actually pretty easy. No, no, I wouldn't say easy. It took time. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult to implement. It just took some time. But, you know, it's simple as just having a, a clock in the game that counts, you know, up to a certain point and resets itself and um, using a, like a type of filter to, you know, make the, the screen darker and brighter. You know, the sun and the moon are just sort of quick, a little easy formula that just determines where their position is based upon the time of the day. Um, so overall that wasn't too bad, but actually what was really funny is that I, when I decided to implement a day and night system, I thought, I didn't really consider the repercussions that would that would have. And what I mean by that is that you suddenly realize that, um, you know, you, if you have a character, like an NPC that's just kind of, you know, sitting out outside or like, you know, waiting for you to come up and talk to them, it looks weird if they're there in the middle of the night, just kind of standing there doing the same thing. So suddenly I'm like, oh man, I got to like figure out what I'm going to do with all these uh, these NPCs and that's so that's when I realized well I gotta like you know come up with some sort of schedule for them and put them inside I mean it really gave me a ton more work than I ever had imagined I didn't I hadn't really thought it through all the way and it's one of those funny things where something seems like a really good idea and then and then you realize I mean I should have just left it so it was day daytime all the time I, I, I definitely see why people do that <laughs> um, but I mean, in the end, it was great. It just that the, the scheduling of NPCs and all that was a lot of work. Um, and I probably, if I had kn knew how much work it would be from the beginning, I probably wouldn't have done that. So sometimes ignorance can be a good thing, I guess. It's probably not true, but. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, this is a good, great question. Someone asked me if um, I ever felt stuck in the game and if I felt stuck what did I do to get myself unstuck and you know I definitely never felt stuck with the game in general I always I feel stuck at certain parts I mean this is a perfect example this whole this whole room I got this you know I redid this a number of times and it I almost scrapped it a couple of times and that's what I mean why I never felt stuck was that I felt like if there's something that wasn't working I could always just pull it out of the game it didn't have to be there you know no one would know uh, any different if I um, you know, if I didn't decide just to cut something. So, and yeah, I guess I never really felt stuck, but I feel stuck at certain parts, you know, certain things. And usually I just would get unstuck by giving it some time to either be, well, there's a couple different ways. I either take some time off from it and just kind of let it sit in my brain for a while. And like, this is a part, like this level definitely had its issues. And a lot of it was that it was, these puzzles were too complex. And as you, you see, like there's, I ended up deciding, you know, I'm just going to make paths, as you see, like these things, like kind of give hint to the player that, you know, where the things have to go, because it, it's difficult enough to, to get through this without having to also guess where all these blocks have to go. So originally it was the, this idea of, you know, you got to figure out where the block has to go and not get it stuck and move it all the way down to the bottom. But the combination was too much, I thought. And so, you know, this is something after a while, I just thought, well, I can just give the player a hint 
it just kind of came to me one day and I was like, all right, I'll try that. And I think at the end, it actually worked out pretty good. Um, in other cases, it was just a matter of, and this is kind of like a, this is something I discovered along the way. It's like when you build a world and you have all these rules in place and you have a story and, and, some, and lore and you have all these things that you've created, sometimes things unstick themselves. Like, you know, you, you, you try to figure out, like, how does this thing that I'm trying to do already fit in with the world I've created? Or how does it, how would this puzzle work logically in this, in the, you know, given the rules that have already been in place? And, and sometimes thinking that way, instead of thinking, like, from an external point of view, thinking as if you were inside the world and what you'd expect to see or find, or or how something you've already implemented in the game can be used a different way. Um, like a lot of the items, for example, I found, you know, maybe it could be used to solve a problem that I'm having with an, a puzzle or, or something. So that was probably like one of the, when I, when I would figure out, discover something like that, like a way to solve a problem with a, by like, you know, kind of like finding a new purpose, repurposing something that's already, I've already created. That was always, I felt to be like the, a good, like a really great feeling. Um, and it really worked out surprisingly well for a lot of stuff. Um, I should probably, you know, think about some more specifics of that, but I don't really have them right now, but I'm mean, going to make a note of that and talk about it later. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Um, oh yeah, this is a great question. So, someone asked, uh, what was the hardest, well they basically said out of the pixel art and characters, out of tile sets, out of sound effects, background music, and level designer programming, which is the hardest, which is the funnest, and which was the easiest. Um, I mean, obviously the hardest for me was the, the music because uh, I can't do music, so I had to have someone do that for me. But it, the, the hardest thing actually really was the programming. I mean, I've taken basic programming. I get, the, I, I understood the general ideas. Granted, and multimedia fusion isn't exactly traditional coding, although it still takes logic and it, it, it does get pretty complex. Um, but the programming was definitely the hardest, and that's kind of why I think platform games are a great way to start because they don't really require you getting real deep into logic. I mean, you can start. You can platform games can be as simple or as complex as you want them to be, and I think they're a really great way to a really great place to uh, um, to start if you're trying to learn, you know, how to how to program. So yeah, programming was the hardest, but you know, it's a thing where. You just take it one step at a time. Um, there's always so many great uh, resources. Oh, crap! I got back. Uh, there's so many great resources on the web and uh, people that are willing to help you. And uh, you know, eventually you just learn it. I mean, I'm still just today, like on the, my new game, um, which uh, I found. I just released a video for that, showing off some of the artificial intelligence. And uh, you know, just today I had to get some help from uh, someone on a forum for something that I should have been able to figure out myself, but just you know couldn't couldn't um, put together the logic in my head and so I mean there's people out there that are willing to spend so you know so much of their, their time to help you do what you got to do and that's really how I how I you know learned it um, so yeah programming was the hardest um, the easiest actually probably was the sound effects like I said like I said I'm not like a not that good at audio but sound effects editing is easy I mean it's, it's pretty it was pretty easy to find something that sounded about what I wanted to be and I don't know cropping and editing and changing the volume of sound effect, that's, that's actually, I find that to be pretty easy to do. Um, so, yeah, I would say that was the easiest. And the funnest, I would say, was level design. I mean, my favorite thing to, was always just starting, like, okay, here's the new level. Start with a blank canvas. And, let, you know, first I usually start with a sketch and sketch it out. And then, you know, start with a blank canvas and start placing blocks. And, and I don't know, that was always fun for me, figuring out how a level should flow and, um, and what, you know, what kind of puzzles and enemies I'm going to put in it. That was always, to me, that was always the most fun. So this is about the end of the video. Um, actually, I got through all my questions. So before I go to this first boss, I think I'm going to call this video quits for now. And um, again, if, uh, you know, if you can, guys can think of more questions, that, that this is incredible. If I can keep this going, you guys keep posting questions, I will keep making these videos. And uh, I'm really enjoying going through this. I don't know, even if I don't have anything to say, I might just play through this game, any rest of this game anyways. Um, so I did want to talk about how I ended up the name, how I ended up naming Treasure Adventure Game that. So that's something I'll talk about next time. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't already, subscribe and post some questions for me to answer, and I will talk to you next time.